Well, if you were one of the lucky 12,000 or so fans in attendance today, you got a treat as Florida State, number 13 Florida State takes number one Duke to the wire and then loses in unbelievably heartbreaking fashion. They had a one-point lead with, a, well, a two-point lead with five seconds to go. Duke hits a free throw to make it one. Ball goes out of bounds. Kind of controversial. Originally, they said it was Florida State's ball. Then it goes to Duke. Then Duke hits a, a shot, a three-pointer with .8 seconds left to hold off uh, Florida, State, uh, Florida State's upset bid. Really an unbelievable game, unbelievable atmosphere, uh, great performances up and down both lineups. Duke was everything they were said to be, and Florida State gave them all, their, all that they could ask for. Uh, what are your takeaways from the game, Corey? I mean, it just seemed like it was, other than the win, right. Florida State gave fans everything they could ask for. Yeah, you know, when you look at it, and, and I think later in the year, come March, um, I think you're going to look at this maybe as a bit of a missed opportunity. I, I don't think that this is going to, I don't think they're going to be a bubble team where like this win would have gotten them in the tournament, but it could affect the seed line from a three to a four, four to a five, a two to a four, whatever it might be, a win over the number one team in the country uh, would have been huge. That said, um, and I truly believe this, man. Coach K said afterwards that Florida State could beat anybody that Duke's played, and Duke has played Gonzaga. Duke's played a lot of really good teams already. Florida State, or K said that Florida State could beat any of them, and if they play like that, they can. Because what happened was, yeah, we get this. By the way, if, if I don't think I've ever seen a more talented team than this Duke team. It's nuts because Zion went out. He had 11 and 8 in the first half, and you didn't even think he played that well. Um, and he went out, didn't play at all in the second half because Trent Forrest kind of poked him in the eye. Didn't kind of he poked him in the eye. But then they have a guy like R.J. Barrett who might be the number two pick in the draft. Hey, he might be the number one pick in the draft. We don't know who's picking. And then the Cam Reddish kid, and I tweeted this out, and it's true, he would be the best recruit that Florida State ever landed. The highest rated freshman, probably the most talented player. He's the other, other guy on this team. So you, you were dealing with, and those guys played well. Like, they stepped up because Zion was out. And look, man, Duke had to earn the win. You didn't give it to him. You had two great players, Reddish and, and Barrett, down the stretch making unbelievable plays, and that's why they won. But Florida State's not going to face that the rest of the year. If they play like that, they, they can beat anybody left on their schedule. Yeah, it really amazed me. I, you know, we all know the talent that Duke has. As you mentioned, Zion Williamson is expected to be the number one player in the draft. Unbelievable talent. He, he, he had a tough time a little bit in the first half, but, but uh, those other guys, I mean, and the, the fact that they didn't wilt under the pressure and the, the crowd, I mean, this right. crowd was unbelievable. Coach K, a lot of times when Krzyzewski comes here, when Duke comes here, People will ask Coach K about the atmosphere, and he'll always say, well, we get this everywhere we go, which is true. But he even talked at length about the crowd today and the atmosphere today and said it was unbelievable. And for those freshmen to come in here and play like that, I mean, you gotta, you got to really be impressed by them. But Florida State played exceptionally well. I mean, they didn't – there was a few plays down the stretch, uh, miss a free throw uh, late in the game that would have put them up by three instead right. of by two. Uh, they also, you know, couldn't get an offensive rebound. It seemed like one of those games uh, – a lot on the offensive glass, or excuse me, on the defensive glass, where if they could have just got a rebound here or there, they could have got some separation. Right. And then that last one, uh, Duke gets the ball back and hits a three. Yeah, I think Reddish's two last threes came after Florida State couldn't grab defensive rebounds. Um, talked to Cabin Gelly about that, and he, he said as much that that's what's so frustrating, just a couple things here and there, and it wouldn't have come down to that last shot. That said, Cabin Gelly was incredible. I mean, that guy, you see the ceiling with that guy. He's, uh, he's really, he, he has a chance, man. He can shoot, he made his free throws. He is so aggressive. Florida State hasn't had a guy like that that's so aggressive underneath. I think he had six offensive rebounds. Duke doesn't give up offensive rebounds like that, and he just crashes the boards. Kofor had another big game. He didn't get that last rebound, but he had 21 points. Um, and, look, I, I would say this. What, what should be encouraging is I don't think Florida State played great. I mean, they, they were 8 of 25 from three. Um, they had 17 turnovers, including 11 in the first half, where they were really frantic and kind of frenetic with the ball. But they showed that even when they don't play great offensively, Duke had to hit a buzzer beater to beat them. That, that should be encouraging moving forward is when this team plays that hard defensively and they crash the glass like that, they can really they can hang and play with anyone. There are, I don't know if this program's in a place where moral victories count anymore, but when you're looking at this team, this specific team, and you think about the ceiling, well, okay, it's really high because – Usually when Florida State shoots 8 of 20, 32% from three against Duke, they have no chance. Yeah, they played really, really hard, but they didn't execute right. as well as they could have. Talking about the last play, it, uh, we got a lot of vague answers from Leonard Hamilton, the, the players involved about what happened on the last play, how uh, Cam Reddish got so wide open. It sounds like there was some miscommunication uh, on who was supposed to get out on him. There was a pick inside, and, um, you know, Florida State, you know, they, they paid the price. I mean, that's yeah. what, when you play a team like that, when you have that kind of a small mistake, this is what can happen. Going forward now, Florida State has to regroup. They come back on Monday after yeah. play at Pitt. 
think that's a really big challenge. I mean, coming off of this game, less you know, 48 hours later. I like to say you don't want to let Duke beat you twice. That's something Did I kind of came up. up with I that? came up with it a couple years ago, talking about you don't want a tough loss to turn into two losses. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a real challenge, man. I know that you know they pride themselves on being able to dust dust their whatever dust off their shoulders. Dust Whatever's on your off. shoulders, you get that dust off. But man, that's that's a gut punch. I don't know that these players, other than the Michigan game, have had a loss quite like this. Uh, in their careers, if they can bounce back and play at Pitt and play well and win that game, that would be a great sign moving forward. I would be surprised if they played well because it's such a short turnaround. They go really no day of prep, and then you have to fly up to Pittsburgh where you're still kind of heartbroken. But, you know, we'll see. I, I will say this on the last play. Like, people think that, you know, Krzyzewski drew up a great play. Well, obviously they were going to pay attention to Barrett because the dude put up 32. But, you know, it kind of came down to some experienced guys not communicating well and not getting out there. Still, as Leonard Hamilton pointed out, he still does, he hadn't seen the film as, as he talked to us, but he's like, I don't understand how we have a seven foot four guy on the ball, and he still makes a great pass to the dude, how he even saw him. And then also the guy had to knock it down. Like even with the, mis, the, the mistakes that Florida State defense made, you had a lottery pick, probably a top five, top 10 pick, knock down the biggest shot of his life. It was just, it was a, it's a tough loss for Florida State, but the beauty of basketball is it's the middle of January and you're 13 and three, um, and you just proved, I think, to yourselves, to your fans, and to the country that you can hang with one of the best teams in the nation. Yeah, we talked about Zion Williamson being hurt. Florida State also was a kind of a baby. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't understand what he's doing. Do we came the, to see you, Zion. You see the picture? He got a uh, finger pretty deep in, or maybe two fingers pretty deep into his eye. They said he had double vision. That's why he couldn't play in the second half. Florida State also was out without Trent Forrest for maybe about four or five minutes in the second half. But that was a crucial stretch. They it were sure up was. five yeah. or six. Uh, that got was down by three, I think. Yeah, I think yeah. they had lost about eight points with him out there. But in, in, not to interrupt you, but it was my he time had cramps. to talk. He, had cramps. he had cramps, but also when he was lifted off the floor like that, you're like, oh god, he break his ankle. Yeah. And that, when you think that okay, all, all it was was cramps, you know, that's a good. That I like to look for the silver lining too. Yeah. That's good silver lining because it looked for a second that they had lost their best player or one of their best players for the season, the way he was helped off the court. But it was just cramps, and then he came back and uh, they lost on a heartbreaker. But the, I think that tells you about the intensity of the game because Cam Reddish yeah. also was dealing with cramps throughout the game and Trent Forrest as well. I'm sure he, other guys Cam were. Reddish fought through it there at the end. Yeah, he did. He, he did. did. Good for him. That's Way a silver lining for Duke. He could be anyway, a Anyway, uh, we're signing off now from the Tucker Center. I've had enough of Corey. <laughs> Florida State falls to number one Duke, 80-78. to 78. We'll see you next time.